Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we are going to study interference in angle modulated waves. Suppose we have an unmodulated sinusoidal carrier A cosine omega ct. And this unmodulated sinusoidal carrier interferes with another signal which is given as i into cosine omega c plus omega of t, where i is the amplitude of the interference signal. So now the received signal is going to be r of t which will be this plus this. So I am going to have a cosine of omega c t and the, this signal which is i into cosine omega c plus omega of t. Now I am going to apply the trigonometric identity. So I am going to expand this. This will be cosine omega c cosine omega t plus minus, minus sine omega c t and sine omega t. So after expanding this I have rearranged this and then as a result I have this equation a plus i cosine omega t into cosine omega c t minus i sine omega t into sine omega c t. Now I have written this in this form e r of t cosine omega c t plus phi of d of t. Now this phi of d of t is going to be my phase which, which can be found out using the tangent inverse i sine of omega t divided by this term which is a plus i cosine omega t. Now let's suppose the interference interfering signal is small as compared to the carrier. So as a result I am going to neglect this term this i cosine of omega t because a is very very greater than i. So I am going to write over here that i by a into sine omega t. This is i by a. The phase of this signal is phi d of t and the instantaneous frequency will be equal to omega c plus the derivative of phi dt. Now if this signal, if this signal is applied to the ideal phase modulator, the output y d of t will be equal to the phi dt. But if this signal is applied to the ideal frequency d modulator, the output y d of t will be the derivative of y dt. So this will, there is a dot here which represents the derivative. So we are going to have y dt is equal to i by a sine omega t for p for pm wave and the y dt for fm will be the derivative of this thing and derivative of this thing is going to give you i omega divided by a cosine omega t. So we are going to have the output this for the pm and for the fm we are going to have the output which is this thing. Now in both the cases the interference output is inversely proportional to the amplitude a. Thus larger the carrier amplitude a the smaller the interference effect and this behavior is very different from the AM signal. Uh, uh, in AM signal the interference output was independent of the carrier amplitude. So we can conclude that the angle modulated systems suppress weak interference. By weak interference I mean that where the I is very very less than the amplitude of the carrier signal much better than the AM signal the amplitude modulated signal. Now because of this uh, angle modulated system suppresses weak interference better than AM, we have what we call the capture effect. So for two transmitters with carrier frequency separation less than the audio range, the stronger carrier is going to suppress or capture the weaker carrier. So hence in EM, the interference level should be kept below 35 db whereas in fm the interference level need to be only below 6 db now let us understand these statements in am the interference level needs to be below 35 db whereas in fm it needs to be below 60 db so in, instead of 35 db let me take the 30 db first of all for example here i have the amplitude modulation and here i have the fm modulation i have the carrier signal which i have unmodulated carrier signal which is a cosine of omega ct and suppose the amplitude of this carrier is constant for both a and fm suppose the power of this is the amplitude is constant so the power will also be constant suppose the power of the carrier unmodulated carrier is one watt in both cases in both am and fm case now we have the interference uh, strength or we can say that the power of the interfering signal or the amplitude of the interfering signal. So suppose in this case the amplitude of the interfering signal is has to be very small in case of M. Suppose that is 1 by 1000. Suppose that is 1 by 1000. So now if I take the interference level in dB which is basically 10 log 
i divided by a if i solve this i am going to get minus 30 db as you can see the interference signal magnitude is very low but still i get minus 30 db in m even that is not acceptable it needs to be less than 35 db it needs to be below 35 db it should be like minus 37 db or minus 40 db so even this interference in am is greater it should be further reduced whereas in fm for example i have the interfere signal magnitude which is let's suppose, on, suppose only 0 0.25 watt this signal amplitude or this signal power is very very greater than this signal power which is 1 by 10,000 but if I solve this if I put in the values to get the dB this is going to give me minus 6 dB in FM it needs to be below minus 6 dB which means that if I have the carrier amplitude signal whose power is 1 watt the interference level needs to be below just 0.25 so even 0 0.2 watt power interference level power is acceptable for a signal for a carrier signal of a 1 watt but here it needs to be less than minus 35 db it needs to be less than 1 by 10 1 by 1000 here it needs to be less than 0 0.25 watt and here it needs to be less than 1 by 1000 for the same carrier amplitude for the same carrier power that's why fm suppresses this interference signal better as compared to the air. Thank you.